Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Haytham again. I wanted to just stop on here to continue um, my video series related to your um, uh, syllabus. So today we will be discussing uh, the uh, skeleton of the shoulder gird. Um, I think I've discussed most of the things just beneath it. I will just make sure and um, just um, ensure that there is a video for every single point. But today we'll be, we'll be doing this one. So the clavicle and the scapula. Um, it is one of the most important points as uh, those two make up the pectoral gird. Um, mainly the function of the pectoral gird uh, is to connect the upper limb, which is the arm, uh, to the axial skeleton. So every every shock from those two limbs towards the axial skeleton is delivered by the clavicle here and the scapula on the, on the back. And we're gonna discuss the details of those things on a very specific level, uh, talking about how they're arranged, where they're located, how they're attached to each other, what they're connected to other stuff, um, the ligaments, um, the, the fossas on them, some features and, and, and stuff like that. Super cool. Um, quickly here, I'm just going to switch. I don't need this one anymore. I just wanted it for um, showing you guys what I'll be doing. Next, we were going to dive into this one. All right, so we're going to start by saying the scapula. All right, so here it's very nice how this does it in two pages, which is actually cool for me. I'm just gonna put my face over here. Um, all right, so the scapula. Um, you guys have already been wondering most of your time for sure, what are those triangular things um, that pop up uh, on the side of the back when somebody's like flexing their back. You can see it sometimes popping in like it just does those, those. you can see like two two things popping out um, on the back. If somebody flexes their, their shoulder like that, you can see it. That you see is part of the scapula, okay? And this is the part right here. Um, it, it It is a triangular, uh, um, uh, bone, um, and it is uh, connected to the other one that we're going to talk in a bit, which is this part right here is the clavicle. From here, it's not very clear, but the clavicle, if you place your hands here, you can see bones right here, which are like, a, they're like curved in a way, like, you know, here. Um, these, they extend from the manubrium down until here and then they join to one of the processes that we're going to talk about um, uh, that are part of the scapula. So let's get into the scapula. Um, the position is on the posterolateral aspect of the chest wall covering the backs of the ribs two to seven. So you can see the ribs from two until seven and it's found on the back. Okay. Um, what else? Um, it, it says here that the medial border, which is here, this one is parallel to the vertebral column, and it's pretty obvious why. Um, what else? Some some things that we can mention. I think um, its surfaces lie in plane midway between the front to the back and side to side. Yeah, so it was just describing where the position is. Um, but you just know here they're found. Um, as I'm pointing right there. And, and with time, you will actually really start to know and feel how the scapula is situated with you as you study it more. Okay, so we're gonna talk about the um, general features of it. And, and, and it's very good to um, really, uh, before beginning to, to get into the specifics of the scapula, as I said, always, you gotta tell Swirsky it's a flat bone. So what type of bone it is? It is a flat bone. And then you can start saying, okay, it's on the postlateral aspect of the um, of the chest covering uh, the ribs, the back of the ribs two to seven. Um, and then you can just, um, you know, give him some introduction from here so that he knows what you're talking about. Next, we're gonna discuss the features of it. So it has two surfaces, anterior and posterior. And you can see this is the anterior surface and this is the posterior surface. And I, an easy way to remember that this is a posterior surface um, is that when you touch the back of your scapula, you can see a horizontal line, like right here, you can see this is the spine of the scapula. And that's why this surface is uh, the posterior surface. Same here with the one on the right. So you have the uh, posterior surface and the anterior surface. Three borders. 
Mm, everything I'm mentioning is 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 something that I have to say in my answer while telling Suriski um, my 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 input. So um, three borders: you have medial, lateral, and superior. Why medial? So everything that is let's say towards the heart is medial. Everything that is away from the heart is lateral, and that's that's how I remember it. And then I have a superior border, which is simply uh, explanatory um okay so you have superior middle and lateral borders okay i'm done so next point they have angles so it, when i have the image of the scapula i can know all those things right off my brain okay so the angles you have an inferior angle you have a lateral angle as i said away from the heart and then you have a uh, superior um, angle which is towards the heart sometimes i can call this as an uh, a medial angle um, that's 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 probably all right as well okay it has three fossas the subscapular fossa this is the subscapular fossa and it is the it is it is touching it, of course there's a subscapular muscle that attaches in that position but um, that surface touches the ribs okay that's the subscapular uh, fossa right here it's facing the ribs uh, facing away from the ribs towards the back we have the um, supraspinous and the infraspinous supraspinous fossa and the infraspinous fossa and from those names you can know that um, supraspinous above the spine infraspinous below the spine okay so pretty forward straightforward very easy until now i hope uh three processes you have the spine which is this bad boy right here you have the acromion uh, uh process which is the ending of the spine uh, pointing laterally and then you have the coracoid uh process which is more seen right here in a better uh image in the anterior part um but this is the posterior view of it so three process crest of spine acromion uh, process and the coracoid uh, process now you have three notches suprascapular the spinal glenoid and the circumflex scapular so the suprascapular is right here suprascapular notch is found in the superior border on let's say the lateral one third of the uh, superior border and this is a very good way in which you can tell Sirisky where the suprascapular notch is okay um, then we have the spinal glenoid notch right here um, I, I don't think it's very important to remember this one I did not study it but just for your sake of knowledge and finally you have the circumflex circumflex scapular um, the circumflex scapular is somewhere here um, let's see circumflex scapular where did it go? Where did it go? Where did it go? Okay, I can't find it right now, but um, it's somewhere here. It's not really very. Uh, we didn't get taught this one, but he certainly mostly focused on the uh, suprascapular notch. Okay, but you can always search images um, to look at those two. Okay, next we have three tubercles. We have the supraglenoid. We have the infraglenoid and we have the tubercle uh, of the spine. And so you can see uh, the uh, supraglenoid tub tubercle. Supraglenoid is the glenoid that is found, is the um, tubercle that is found superior to the uh, glenoid cavity. Okay. And the infraglenoid tubercle, uh, tubercle is found inferior to the glenoid cavity. And what the glenoid cavity is, it's the space where the uh, ball head of the humerus attaches to the scapula. And that's how the mainly the shoulder joint is formed. Okay. And then you have the, um, where is it? Tubercle of the spine. It's somewhere on the spine. Um, didn't study this one so much, but like you can always look at it on pictures. Finally, uh, we're going to dive into the surfaces. So until now, we have gone through all of those general features. These are very th these are things that you should remember off your brain, quite easy and simple. If you have the image of the scapula within your head, you can easily say it. Next, we have the costal surface, uh, anterior and ventral. Um, it is slightly concave, forming the scapular fossa. As I said, it is directed forwards and medially. So costal, from its name, facing the ribs costal is ribs right so 
facing the ribs and it has the subscapular fossa. This is called a surface. Now the dorsal posterior surface contains and faces backwards, faces, uh, faces backwards, contains um, um, uh, the spine, which is right here, as I said, and then you have um, it, it divides the spine divides the um, posterior surface into the uh, superior uh, small um, supraspinous fossa and the inferior small infraspinous fossa. Okay, so we've gone through uh, those things. Um, we just have to um, move on right now. I hope you've got a general idea of what the scapula is. So we're going to see how details um, are going to be facing us right now. And as I said, there's uh, borders of the uh, uh, superior border, as I said, lateral border, okay, and the medial border. In this case, this is the left scapula, and that's why the lateral border is on this side, okay. Um, you can you can mainly just read through these um, specifics of the uh, lateral lateral medial and superior borders just to give him maybe more words if he wanted it, um, but you wouldn't have time to go into super details because this answer can be uh, so long and hence my video today. Okay, the angles as I said you can just mention them. Um, you can go deep and learn into it if you want to, but I want to move on for simplicity. Um, the fossas, as I said, there are three fossas. We mentioned them. Uh, processes of the scapula. Um, yes, these are very important. So uh, the spine of the scapula, this is a process that as it's classified in this book. Um, and, and they discuss the specifics of it here, A, B, C, D, E. Imagine that the spine, and you will see in the lab, you can actually hold, um, hold the spine where your uh, index finger goes into the su superior um, uh, superior, uh, the supra um, spinous fossa, and the thumb goes into the infra spinous fossa, and then the sp the the um, you can you can hold the spine like that, and then once you hold it, so it has an anterior border, uh, joins to the dorsal surface of the scapula along a horizontal line, the posterior surface on the back. Um, called the crest of the spine, okay, it can be felt beneath the skin. As I said, if you put your hand here, you can feel the spine, okay. Uh, the lateral border um, here, it says free and shares the formation of the sp uh, spinal glenoid notch. Um, it's it's the notches uh, somewhere somewhere on the uh, uh, spine, which is, uh, yeah, there right here, spinal glenoid uh, notch, and that's what the lateral border um, says, I think it's it's the space here that they're talking about between the acromion process and the coracoid process. That is the spinal glenoid notch, just between the glenoid cavity and the spine, and that's the notch over there. The upper surface of the spine completes the spinous fossa. So the upper surface of the spine, they're saying this right here, completes the supraspinous fossa. As we said, supraspinous fossa is right here. So they're saying the upper border of the crest completes the supraspinous fossa and the lower border of the crest contains completes the infraspinous fossa. It's just specific details of like how things are um, created and you have if you have that knowledge with your head, the, the able to describe the scapula like that is very powerful and strong for your exam. Finally, the acromial process, which is just a continuation of the spine, it ends on the lateral end as the spine ends, uh, and, and it says here it is the lateral continuation of the spine. Okay, um, what else? Mm, the lower lip of the crest of the spine. Okay, so it's just like okay, just know there's the acromial process, which is continuation of the spine of the scapula. Next, we have the uh, coracoid process. The coracoid process. Um, um as I said, it's just I don't I don't think you can just talk much about the coracoid process, but it's right here. Um it is um it is on the same like facing the same direction as the um the costal surface of the uh, um what is it called the uh, scapula. Okay. Then we have the notches, as I said, you have the supra scapular notch, which is this one right here. You have the spinal glenoid notch and you have the circumflex uh, scapular notch. Yes, it's right here. And it is found on the lateral border of the, um, the uh, scapula. Okay, 
Uh, next, we have the tubercles, and the tubercles are important landmarks on the scapula as well. Uh, we have the supraglenoid tubercle, the infraglenoid, and the tubercle of the crest of um, the spine. Now, these are mainly um, spots where muscles can be touched sometimes. So, for example, on the su supraglenoid tubercle, um, sorry, supraglenoid tubercle, you have the attachment of, I think, the long head of the biceps. Mm, biceps muscle and on the infraglenoid i think the um, one of the three heads of the uh, triceps and i don't remember right now but these are spots where muscles attach and that's why they're important and that's why we uh, we have to know them okay functions of the scapula um as i said in the beginning of the video it transmits weight of the upper limb to the clavicle so the upper limb is connected in a way to the to the scapula, and it trans this weight is transmitted from the upper limb to the clavicle by the uh, scapula. Okay, and it also provides a wide surface of muscle uh, muscular attachments. For example, you have on the uh, uh, infraspinous you have the infraspinous muscle, supraspinous muscle, and then on the subscapular uh, fossa you have the subscapular muscle, and and that's how uh, easy you can remember your muscles in the future, and you will see um, how they are. Okay, um, what else? We have uh, the ligaments, and it's very important to know those ligaments because um, you would want to know how their everything is connected to each other. So the ligaments here is, is quite simple, and from their names, it's easy to know. First, you have the capsule of the shoulder joint. So you have, remember I said the ball attaches to the glenoid cavity of the scapula, and this attachment is... is, is mm, it's not attachment, it's just like they articulate, but then what holds them together is actually a capsule of the joint, uh, of the shoulder joint. It's a huge ligament that wraps around those two to just hold them in place. And this is the capsule of the shoulder joint, and you can see it right here, this big landed, uh, this big um, lined up in black uh, kind of uh, joint. Then you have the um, uh, superior, middle, inferior, glenohumeral, uh, ligaments from this um, um, from this name you can see that from the glenoid uh, fossa to the humerus so it attaches to the glenoid cavity and the humerus just to uh, join this more more attachments to make this uh, joint um, as strong as it can be uh, then we have the coracoacromial ligament coraco from the corite coracoid process to the acromial process. So coracoacromial ligament, that's the one right here. Then we have the coracoclavicular ligament, coracoclavicular ligament. So the one that come, goes between the coracoid process and the clavicle right here. Then we uh, then it says that it has two parts. Yes, I don't remember that. Um, it extends from the um, uh, coracoid process to the clavicle. The coracoacromial ligament which is made up of two parts. I just remember off, off my brain, conoid part and the trapezoid part. Okay, easy, easy, easy. It can be easy when you just um, repeat it all the time. Uh, coracohumeral uh, ligament from the uh, coracoid to the humerus. It's here in black from the coracoid to the humerus. Coraco, coracoacromial ligament. And then finally, the suprascapular uh, ligament um, attached across the uh, suprascapular notch right here. That's the suprascapular ligament and all of those ligaments are important for stabilization and you'd have to know all of those things and from where they touch and where from where they from the where the origin is and where the attachment uh, of those things are okay um, I'm not going to go over the muscles right now because you guys don't need them now but later now we're going to go and dive into the clavicle the clavicle on the other hand um, is also a flat bone um, and you'd have to mention that when you start the, um, discussing it you can you can uh, discuss its anatomical uh, position and as i told you it's right here and if you uh, touch it it's very uh, palpable and it's also obvious um, on the skin um, it lies horizontally on the root of the neck almost all parts can be felt subcutaneously so you can you can feel it right here Okay, identification of the side. Mm. Um, this is, okay, yeah, the, the, the lateral acromial end is flattened. So it, it has two ends, the acromial, which is close to the acromial uh, and attached to the acromial process and the medial, which is attached to the sternal, the manubrium of the sternal, okay? 
And then you can see uh, the medial, so the medial, the one, the, the, the two third, which is closer to the heart, medial, is convex forward. So it, it, it's bulging out, okay? And the lateral one third, lateral away from the heart, one third is convex backward. So it's, it's convex backward. So I would imagine that it's concave forward. So um, we have it this way. So, um, and, and it's palpable. So it's, it goes like that and then like this. Okay, I don't know why I just did, but like you can feel it. So it's palpable here and then it goes deeper. Okay, and that's that's how you describe it. On the medial uh, two-third, it's a convex forward. On the lateral two-third, it's convex backward. Um, okay, so the functions of the clavicle, yes, as I said, and together with the scapula, it transmits the uh, forces from the upper limb towards the axial skeleton together with the, um, ster uh, the scapula. Articulation of the clavicle. In the medial sternal end, the sternal end is the end that is close, close to the sternum, okay? It articulates with the clavicular notch of the manubrium sterni. So I will show you right here. Man uh, the clavicular notch of the manubrium, okay? This is the sternal end attached to the clavicular notch of the manubrium. And the lateral or acromial end articulates with the acromial process of the scapula. As you see, acromial end articulates with the acromial process. And that's the clavicle right here, guys. Okay. Um, yeah, so now we're going to discuss just details of those attachments and maybe some ligaments in the future, uh, in the close future right now. Uh, the medial sternal end. Um, medial sternal end. Medial closer to the heart, sternal end closer to the sternum. Okay. Um, where is it? So you have, um, it presents a smooth facet for articulation with the clavicle facet of the manubrium sterni. As I said, it at, at, attaches or articulates with the clavicular notch of the manubrium. The lower part of the facet, though, extends slightly on the inferior surface of the middle end for articulation with the first costal cartilage. What does that mean? Is that as it articulates with the clavicular notch of the manubrium, it also articulates with the first rib. And this is the first rib, so it articulates on two position on the sternal end, um, near the, uh, to the sternum and to the rib. So here we have good attachments and you will see ligaments forming on this end. So the lateral acromial end, this part, um, it carries an oval facet for articulation of the chromium process of the scapula at the acromio, um clavicular uh, joint. And you can see lateral end and the acromial process. And this is an, the, clavi the acromio clavicular joint, okay? And this is, the other one is called the clavicular sternal joint from its name, clavicle sternum acromial clavicle. You see what I mean? Like easy, easy, easy names for joints. Uh, the shaft of the uh, clavicle, uh, yeah, you just have to mention that it is here, you see? Uh, medial two thirds is convex forward, lateral, lateral one third is convex backward, okay? That's it. Next. All right, so we're gonna be discussing, um, maybe in this part right here, I wanna discuss maybe those two things. So you have the conoid tubercle on the lower surface of the clavicle and the trapezoid uh, line on the lower surface of the clavicle. This is for the attachments of the, of the um, coracoacromial uh, ligament parts, which is made up of two parts. And as you guys, may remember from the previous previously mentioned points about the um, ligaments. I will just show you right now. Caraco uh, clavicular ligament has the conoid part and the trapezoid part. Conoid part and the trapezoid part. And on the clavicle, we have the conoid um, tubercle and the trapezoid line. These are the positions where those two ligaments attach on the clavicle and they have similar um, names for these attachment positions, okay? Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Okay. Lemon squeezy till it has squeezy. Never mind that, okay. 
Next, the ligaments attached. So you have the uh, coracoclavicular ligament. As I said, it has two parts. The trapezoid uh, line um, allows for the attachment of the trapezoid uh, part of the coracoclavicular ligament. And the conoid tubercle allows for the attachment of the conoid um, ligament uh, part of the um, uh, coracoclavicular ligament. And these two are just mentioned again here. Um, next. You have the costal clavicular ligament, the costal clavicular ligament, as I said, the costal clavicular uh, rib, costal clavicular clavicle, uh, costal clavicular ligament, and it's attaching the clavicle to the first um, rib right here. So that's the articulation. And then you have finally the interclavicular ligament. Interclavicular ligament is between the two, the two um, certain ends of the uh, clavicles, opposite clavicles. It runs just um, above the manubrium of the sternum for uh, more stabilization. All right, I think this is uh, all of what we need to cover for the scapula and the uh, clavicle. I hope you guys like this video and um, I hope it brings knowledge uh, in an easy way for you. I hope you um, can continue to repeat and repeat and repeat until you memorize all of those. And I advise to read and go, uh, go through my video and read what I, what I showed you carefully and maybe put down a speech uh, for yourself and then keep repeating that speech until all those details are uh, inside your brain. Um, then you can move on to the next point. Thank you guys very much. This was Haytham Al-Hamaydi and I hope I have been in great help. See you guys in the next video.